I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Today we're reading from the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 20, and let's focus on verses 12 through 17. By the Lord, the God of Israel, if I sound out my father by this time tomorrow or the next day, I find out that he is favorable towards you, and if I do not send for you and tell you, then may God punish Jonathan and do so severely. If my father intends to bring evil on you, then I will tell you, and I will send you away, and you will go in peace. May the Lord be with you, just as he was with my father. If I continue to live, treat me with the Lord's faithful love. But if I die, don't ever withdraw your faithful love from my household, nor even when the Lord cuts off every one of David's enemies from the face of the earth. Then Jonathan made a covenant with the house of David, saying, May the Lord hold David's enemies accountable. Jonathan once again swore to David in his love for him, because he loved him as he loved himself. Now, as far as the narrative is concerned, verses 12 through 17 do not even have to be in the text. In fact, we can go immediately from the end of verse 11 to the beginning of verse 18 without any loss in the flow of the story. But this entire chapter is about a covenant relationship and the extent of these two men's love for each other. Not romantic love, but just love of two brothers for each other. It's paramount to our understanding of God's covenant with us through Jesus. You see, love is the difference between a contract and a covenant. Love is not just committed to the details. Love is committed to the person. Jonathan is formally committing himself, always, to act as he did at the beginning of chapter 19. Now, people typically do not do what Jonathan is doing. You don't hand over your place uh, and your palace to your rival and then promise to protect him, especially when that place which you have been given is the crown prince. It's just not natural. But if Jonathan were normal... Well, that he would have disposed of David. He would, David would have been a challenge to the throne. He would have seen David as Saul saw David. Because in fact, what angers Saul so much is that Jonathan is committed to David and it defies all political sense. Jonathan really did seek first another kingdom. And it didn't align with earthly common sense. Even more unusual was the commitment that Jonathan urges on David. In verse 14 through 16, you see, the time will come when Jonathan and not David will be the needy one, at least in a figurative sense. In fact, David honored his covenant with Jonathan Jonathan, when that time came. So what does Jonathan, the man, teach us? Well, true life does not consist in securing your kingdom, but in reflecting the Lord's faithfulness in covenant relationships. There's something liberating about that. Jonathan had acknowledged that the kingdom was the Lord's, and as such, it was David's, if the Lord so chose. And this meant that Jonathan understood that his life did not need to be centered on his ambition. How many pastors need to hear that? They see a challenge. They see a threat. That person's going to start a church from within our church. Hey, it's not your church, number one, bro. It's the Lord's church. And if somebody's preaching the gospel and people are getting saved or people are getting discipled and encouraged, wouldn't you want to add people like that to your team instead of push them out? You see, on what Jonathan could get for himself on earth, it meant nothing to him. Rather, Jonathan rested in whatever the Lord chose to give him. And as believers, our focus An overriding passion should not be to make my way and my living, to make my mark or to gain my place in history in order to get ahead. That thought may constitute the death blow to our prideful wills, but it frees us. You see, love does not consist in the toil of achieving our goals, rather in fulfilling our responsibility to God who has the power to bless or to curse. We should wake up every morning with a vow of renewed surrender. Thy will, thy way, thy glory be exalted through me. 
And then the Lord will disclose where he wants to send you, how he wants to sustain you, and he will equip and protect you for the work that he has called you to. And he will establish your influence among men. You don't have to do it yourself. Just seek the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all of your ways acknowledge him, and he'll make straight your path. I'm Steve Wiggins, and this is the Groundworks Ministries podcast. Groundworks Ministries operates entirely through financial donations from faithful people, people like you. And if you're being ministered to through the Bible teaching of Groundworks Ministries and you'd like to help us reach this generation with the gospel, would you consider donating to Groundworks Ministries today? Donating is secure and it is easy at our website. So check us out at groundworksministries.com.